Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Rebecca, and in today's video, I'm going to be covering all of the basics in makeup that you need to know. This video isn't necessarily like an everyday look. Of course, you can incorporate it into your everyday. This is just to give you like a base knowledge of why to do things and how to do them. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, then just keep on watching. Okay, so the very, very first thing you need to know and you need to do is skincare. It does not matter how amazing your foundation is, how expensive it is, if you're not taking care of your skin and you don't have a good canvas, it's not going to look great. Make sure you've cleansed your face, put on an eye cream, and also put on a moisturizer to really give your skin that hydration it needs. If you just go straight from like a dry face to foundation, what's going to happen is now you have this moisture on your skin and your face is thinking, oh, here's my hydration. And it's just going to suck up that foundation and let it settle in all of your pores because it wants to be hydrated. Like a sponge, if the sponge is already full of water, it can't keep absorbing it. So you really wanna make sure your face is hydrated and ready to go. So next step is primer. A primer is something that goes on before your foundation. It's gonna help smooth out the skin. It's gonna possibly help hydrate depending on the primer. It's gonna help give your foundation something to grab onto. That way you kind of have a barrier between the oils that are on your skin and the foundation. Because as the day goes on, we naturally produce oils and that's what's gonna break down your makeup. But if you have something between your foundation and your skin, it's just gonna help slow down that process so that your foundation can last longer throughout the day. Today I'm gonna be using the Hourglass Mineral Veil Primer. So I'm just taking a pump of that and I put it on the back of my hand. I'm going to dab it all over my face and just rub that in. So next up, I'm gonna be using foundation. A lot of people tend to use concealer before foundation, but let me tell you why it's better if you do it reverse. The purpose of foundation is kind of to give you a blank canvas. So whenever you put that on your face first, you can really see how much concealer you need after that and you're gonna end up using less product. If I look at my face right now, I can see I have redness, I have like some dark circles, I have this blemish. Hello, thanks for being here today. So I'm gonna take my concealer and I'm gonna just go crazy because I see all these imperfections. But if I start with my foundation and just kind of even everything out, I'm gonna end up using a lot less because there's not gonna be as much to cover up. Today I'm using the NARS Sheer Glow foundation. To apply my foundation today, I'm gonna to be using a beauty blender. If you have drier skin, a beauty blender is going to probably be a better route for you to go because with a brush, if you think about it, you're going to be moving it and like swirling it across your skin. And if you're a dryer, most likely you have more texture and you might even have some skin that's lifting. So if you're moving this brush over top of that, it's lifting things up, bringing them to the surface, giving you some like patchy spots. With a beauty blender, it's a like bouncing motion. You're not gonna have that problem. You're just pressing it into the skin instead of moving around the surface of your skin. So I'll always take my foundation and put it on the back of my hand and just kind of warm it up with my finger. And then I'd like to dab it on my face one section at a time. You don't want it to start drying out while you're working on another part of your face. So I think it's always great to kind of tap it in a little bit, warm it up so that it blends a little nicer. I'll take my beauty blender and all you need to do is just bounce this over the foundation. You should never be pulling, swiping, anything like that. It's a bouncing motion to really tap that into place and blend that out. You can already tell the difference between the side with foundation and the side without. It has canceled out most of my redness. It's covered this slightly. I gotta go in with concealer to really help that out. Now, looking at it, I'm like, I don't need that much concealer all over my face. Doing the same thing on the other side. And here's a tip, always start with less. If you're worried about looking cakey or fake or whatever, just start with less product. And after you do that first layer, you can kind of decide, mm, maybe not full coverage enough. 
so then you can go back in and add more. If you just go in straight from the start, piling it on, at the end you're gonna hate the way it looks, especially if you're newer to makeup, you're not used to wearing it, you're gonna feel like, oh my gosh, I hate foundation, I'm never wearing this again. Start with less and build up to whatever coverage you want. And any area on your face that you feel you have more maybe fine lines or wrinkles, whatever, put less product. The more product you push into lines, the more visible they're going to be. And I'll take some of the excess foundation on my Beauty Blender and just kind of tap over my eyes just to even out the skin tone on my eyes. I'm not dipping in and getting more because it's not necessary. Just a tiny little bit and that should even you out. You're going to want to make sure that you blend out your jawline and down your neck with the foundation. Never just do your face. Even if the foundation you are using is a perfect match to your neck or your skin tone, what's going to happen is throughout the day your foundation will oxidize. Depending on the brand, it could be really bad oxidation or just a little bit. But eventually it's going to oxidize and get darker, so you will end up with a mask at some point in the day. I'll dab into the back of my hand just a little bit. You don't need a thick layer, just enough to kind of add a tint. I'll start close to my jawline and blend that even behind my ear a little bit and down my neck. So now I'm going to be moving on to concealer. Concealer is basically a higher pigmented version of foundation. Now you might have heard before that you want to use a concealer that's like two shades lighter than your skin tone. And that would be right if you're using it for highlighting. Now, since I have this pimple on my face, it does not make sense to take a lighter concealer and put that on this pimple to try to hide it. Whatever is lighter on your face is going to push forward. So if I highlight this pimple, well then, hello, it's going to be way more noticeable. So typically I'll take something hydrating and lightening under my eyes and any other blemishes, dark spots, whatever, that's where you're going to want to use a concealer that's exactly the same color as your foundation. So today for under my eyes, I'm going to be using the ColourPop No Filter Concealer. It's a little bit lighter than my foundation and will give me a little bit of a highlight to my face. Again, the less is more really applies here. Typically, most people do have at least one line under their eye, or if you're a little bit older, you might have more fine lines around your eyes. Now, if you take your concealer and do that huge triangle that most people do on YouTube and on Instagram, you're putting on so much product, it's just gonna get in those lines and show them off. So I'm just gonna take this concealer and do just a few dots under my eye. That's pretty much all you need. So I will take my Beauty Blender again and do the exact same thing that I did for the foundation with my concealer. I'm just gonna tap it in. No swiping, no dragging, just tapping. So next, to cover this blemish, I'm gonna go in with a concealer that's the same shade as my foundation. I'm gonna be using the Makeup Forever Full Coverage Concealer. I'll just tap a tiny bit on and then again, Beauty Blender and blend it out. So unfortunately, even though I've covered the color, that bump is still there. So, you know, it's not magic. Don't think if you have like textured bumpy skin or like you have any bumps on your skin that that's gonna go away. It's not magic. It's just gonna get rid of the redness. Today I'm gonna be going in with the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Powder. This is again where I would say less is more. You've probably seen online people taking a thick layer of powder and packing that under the eyes. That's called baking and that's really not something that is necessary, especially for like every day. Um, and if you have dry skin already, by packing on more powder, it's just sucking any hydration out of your skin and it's gonna leave you very like dry and crepey. So I would avoid that, especially if you have fine lines, avoid it. I mean, if you did have a lot of lines on your face, I might avoid powder entirely. It's not completely necessary, but I will say typically you might get a longer wear throughout the day with a powder, but 
that's debatable. Also depends on the quality of your foundation. But for me, to prevent creasing under my eyes, I have to set it with a little bit of powder. And I'll show you how I do that. So I'm just gonna take a smaller tapered brush and I'm going to use that to set under my eye. I'm going to pick up a little bit of powder, dip into the powder, and then I kind of knock off the extra in the cap. And also make sure you are tapping off that excess because boy, did I pick up a lot. That's not necessary. Or you can tap it on the back of your hand. I don't know if you can see that cloud, but you really just want a thin layer of powder. That is all you need. Before I go in and set my under eyes, I'm gonna take my Beauty Blender again and kind of tap out any lines, any creasing. And I'm gonna take my brush and push that underneath my eye, right over top of my concealer. And whatever is left on the brush, I'll kind of tap it out and down. All right, I'll just do the same exact thing on the other side. Also, make sure you're never blowing on your brushes to get off excess. It's really not hygienic. It's gonna get bacteria and stuff all over your brushes. You're putting it near your eye. It's just not the smartest thing to do. Just tap it off. It's all you gotta do. And just going in, and I'm really pressing it under my eye. I'm not dragging, I'm not pulling just because I don't want to move around all the work that I just did to get everything smooth and flawless, I just want to set it. So by swiping it around, you're, you're running the risk of like moving around everything you just did. So then I'm gonna go in with a bigger fluffy brush. I always use a tapered one, you don't have to, it can be rounded. I'm just gonna dip into the powder and tap off the excess. And same as the eyes, if you have any lines or any creasing, you can take your beauty blender and just tap that out before you set it. Cause you don't want to set your foundation in the lines. So I'll take my brush and again with a pressing motion, just set everything down. And since I did put foundation on my eyelids, I'm going to set that as well so I don't get creasing, which I would not have done if I was doing eyeshadow. But today I'm not going to be doing an eyeshadow look. I'm gonna save that for a separate video. And I'm even gonna set my neck. <laughs> Typically my next step is going to be my eyebrows. This is a step you really don't wanna miss unless you have like naturally full brows that you know, you barely have to fill in, then you could skip this if you're in a rush. But if you can see for me, well, I really need the help. So eyebrows are what frame your eyes and just draw the attention to your eyes in the center of your face. Personally, I love to go in with pencils. You can also use a powder if it's easier for you, but I do find that a lot of times with powder, I don't get as easily those hair strokes. It kind of looks more like a block of color which I don't feel is as natural looking. Today I'm going to be going in with precisely my brow pencil by Benefit. So when doing your brows, the best way to do it is to start at the tail of your brow. The reason I do that is because typically you want your brow to kind of fade from a little bit lighter to deeper. So if you start at the tail where it's going to be deepest, it kind of gives you a guide of like how light handed to be, how to like fade that color. So if you start with the front of your brow, you might put on too much pigment and by the time you get to the end you're like oh I can't deepen this up anymore the damage is done so I always start at the tail so I always start at the bottom and just little hair strokes create the shape that I want and I'm gonna follow that the top of my brow to where I want my arch to be so I'm just doing little tiny hair strokes and don't worry if you kind of mess up and go outside the lines. I'm going to show you how to fix that. And then I'll start moving towards the front of my brow. Just doing those little hair strokes. And you want the tail of your brow to end if you hold the pencil right at the corner of your eye, right where that it hits that pencil right there is where the end of your brow should be. And if you hold it straight against your nose, that's where it should start. 
and your arch is right on the outside of your iris. So I'm gonna go in and kind of brush that out. Just if it's, it's a little bit patchy in some places, so I'm gonna kind of brush out that pigment. Also another tip, when you're drawing on your brows, you really wanna be light-handed. Don't add tons of pressure, push that pencil on your skin. You really want to build up the pigment slowly. So I always hold it towards the end of my pencil. That way it's not gonna put as much pressure against my skin. So just really light-handed, I'm drawing this on. So if you wanted, you could stop here. This is probably enough for a lot of people. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take a tinted brow gel and I'm going to, well, tint my eyebrows. <laughs> today I'm using the Benefit Gimme Brow. So what this is gonna do for you is it's going to help define every little hair and kind of give you some texture so that your eyebrows aren't just a block of color. It's really gonna add some texture to the eyebrows and define those hairs, which Lord knows I need. So again, I'm gonna start at the tail. And I'm gonna be super light-handed while I'm doing this. Also, this is gonna help your brows stay in place. For me, they're not very unruly, so they're not going anywhere. If your brow hairs are longer, then this is just gonna hold them in place. Okay, so now that you have all that done and you're looking at your brows and you're like, oh no, I didn't do this part right, this part's uneven, I went outside the lines, well, let me show you how to fix that. It's super easy. So I just take a flat brush. Whatever foundation is left on my hand is gonna be enough to carve out your brows. Anyone who's using like a thick layer of concealer, so unnecessary. All you need is a tiny bit of foundation. So I'm just gonna dip into the back of my hand in whatever is left. And I'm gonna go under my brow first and kind of line that edge just to make it a little sharper. And then kind of blend it out if it moved my foundation at all. And I'm just gonna do that all the way around my brow. All right, same thing on the other side. And if the front of your brows got a little too dark, you can always use whatever's left on this brush and kind of go over the front a little bit to just lighten it up. Okay, now that my brows are done, I'm going to move on to my eyes. So I'm going to take a black pencil liner. This is by Urban Decay, the 24 seven glide on eye pencil in the shade zero. So I'm just gonna take this and tight line my eyes, which is, not your bottom waterline, it's just, it's the, I guess, waterline on the top of your eye. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna really push my pencil into my lash line. So what that's gonna do is it's just going to kind of fake that you have a fuller lash line. Like for me, I have like six eyelashes, so I pretty much always put on fake lashes, but I'm not gonna be doing that today, so my end result's not gonna be very dramatic, <laughs> that's for sure. Same thing on the other side. So something I see a lot is you'll see people taking a black liner and lining their bottom waterline all the way all the way into their inner corner. Now, I don't normally recommend lining underneath your eyes unless you kind of have a dramatic eye look going on. Since I'm gonna be so simple today, like if I take a black pencil and I go and line my bottom waterline, what that's gonna do is completely close my eyes. If you wanna add a little more drama to the eye, I always suggest doing it up 
like on the top line maybe adding some liner above your lashes instead of below we don't want to bring the eyes down we want to look awake and fresh so you really want to keep the drama towards the top of your eyes just to keep them open and fresh now I'm gonna do a little bit of liner above my lash line today but I'm not gonna be using a pencil what I'm gonna be using is a flat brush that's kind of got an angle to it and a shadow. The reason I'm gonna use a shadow today opposed to a pencil is because I want a softer, more natural look. So actually, instead of a black, I'm going to take a very dark brown and just go over my lash line. Shadow is gonna look a lot softer, more subtle, more natural. It's just not so intense. So you can just go in with any dark brown you have. Now I will say if you have very dark features like your your hair is black, you have black brows and you have thick, you know, lashes, go for black. That's totally fine. For me, I'm very fair. So if I take, you know, a black, it's just going to be a little too harsh for me since I'm going for a more natural look. So I'm going to take a dark brown, just get it on my brush tap it off a little bit and I'm going to press this as close to my lash line as possible. I'm not going to be winging it out, I'm just trying to make my lash line look a little fuller. And you really want the thickest part of your liner to be towards the outside of your eye. As you move in, you want it to get a little thinner. That's going to really help elongate the eyes. So that's it. That's all I'm doing for liner. Nothing fancy, just close to my lash line. And with this technique, I'm not dragging my brush. I'm just pushing it into place. If you start dragging, you could like get some skipping and that's not going to look great. It's just way easier to control if you can just do a pressing motion across the lid. It's going to give you way more control, so much easier. All right, and that's it for my liner. So I'm gonna go into lashes. I'm gonna be using an eyelash curler because my lashes just kind of point straight out and I really wanna lift my eyes, so I'm going to go ahead and curl them. Now, curling your lashes might seem super weird at first. It just takes practice. I would suggest doing it with your eyes open. So I just look into a mirror, keep my eye open, try to get all those lashes in there and get as close to my lash line as possible and I kind of just like squeeze and pulse it just for a few seconds. And I don't know if you can tell on camera, but this side is just lifted. I mean, it might be hard to see because like I said, I have six eyelashes, but it's just gonna help lift the eye. Now going into mascara, I'm gonna use the Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara. It's one of my all time favorites. There's not too much to know about putting on mascara. I always start going underneath my lashes and then to kind of help separate them I'll go on the back of them and unfortunately for me <laughs> I don't have the best lashes so hopefully you are a little better off than I am with mascara this is why I always put on fake lashes The next thing I'm going to move to is bronzer. So now that I've put this foundation on, my skin is very smoothed out and now I have this blank canvas to work on. Now, if I just left the house like this, people might say, hey, are you sick? It's because I got rid of all the color in my face. That's not natural. The purpose of giving yourself this blank canvas is so you can put color where it looks best instead of like patchiness or redness or anything like that. So you're really gonna at this point want to warm up your skin and add a little color back into it. So I'm going in with the Pure Cosmetics Bronzer. This is Bronzing Act Shade Light. Since I'm not contouring, I'm just going to take a big fluffy brush because I don't need super precision in this. And again, bronzer and blush is going to be something that you want to build slowly. So don't dip into your palette and really like scrape into it. Dip in, just tap a few times and build it slowly. I always start it close to my hairline and bring it forward. 
in a swiping motion and I might pat it in a little bit. And I'll bring it down along my jawline. I'll bring it to my hairline. You're really kind of going for like a three. The reason I always start towards my hairline is because that's where you want it to be deepest and you want it to fade to light. Wherever you place your brush down first, that's where it's gonna get the most pigment. So if I dip into my palette and press in the middle of my cheek, well, I've kind of messed up that fade that I want. So always dip in and start towards your hairline and work your way forward. Real quick, I'm just gonna wipe the foundation off my lip because it kind of looks crazy. I just use a Q-tip and just take that off. Okay, now that I added a little warmth back into my skin, I wanna add some color back in. So I want that redness, but in the right places. I'm just gonna be using today like a peachy corally blush. Whatever you have that suits your skin tone will work out great. I'm gonna go in with more of a tapered fluffy brush for my blush. It's a little bit smaller than what I used for bronzer because I do want a little more precision with this. So I'm just gonna dip in like two taps and I'm gonna start kind of like towards the bottom, like the lower part of the apple of my cheek and I'm gonna work my way up. You don't wanna bring your blush straight back. You don't wanna bring it down. You wanna trick the eye that your face is being lifted. So you start towards like the center bottom part of the apple of your cheek and then you're just gonna work your way up. To find the apple of my cheeks, I always give myself a little awkward smile <laughs> and then follow that up. And you wanna try to kind of blend that bronzer and blush together. And me personally, I always like to put a little bit on the tip of my nose. That's totally personal preference. You can skip this step, but I just think it looks cute, so I'm gonna go for it. I just kinda like tap it on the tip of my nose just to add some color to the center of my face. So now that my face is pretty much done, I'm just gonna throw something on my lip for me, I have pretty bright lips naturally, so I'm just gonna put on a gloss. This is the Ultra Glossy Lip by ColourPop. So I'm just gonna throw this on. There's not much to tell you about this, just don't miss your lips. And the very last thing I'm gonna do is set my face with a setting spray. I don't know that I necessarily believe that a setting spray is going to hold your makeup on longer, but what I do believe is that it's going to help melt down my powder so that my face looks more natural. So I'm using the Morphe setting spray today and I'm just going to spray my face. I love this product, it is so nice. It makes your skin look so natural. Setting spray is not completely necessary for sure, but if you want a more natural finish and you want that powder to kind of melt down to look more like skin, get a setting spray, a good one. I recommend either Morphe setting spray or the MAC Prep and Prime, they're great. So that's about it for this video. I hope it helped you. I hope you learned something. This look is meant to be very natural, but a little, maybe a step above in everyday. Maybe in everyday makeup you wouldn't do all of these steps, but if you wanted to, I hope now you know how. If you haven't yet, please subscribe. I'm gonna be making a lot more videos just like this, some more fun and funny and others more serious, in-depth teaching videos. I'm gonna go through all different types of eye looks, so if you're interested in learning more or just want some entertainment, then please subscribe and like this video. And also go follow my Instagram. I'm an artist, so I make all sorts of different crazy things and it's all on my Instagram. So if you wanna see some interesting stuff, then go check that out. My Instagram is Rebecca Yusuf 712 So I think that's pretty much it. Thanks so much for watching. Bye guys.